Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation. I posted a, a message on my Facebook page, given that I'm being censored on Facebook, uh, where I said today's radio program will be very special and very different. I, will, I hope you will find it inspirational. And I intend to go down that road for a bit. And 4,443 people were reached since I posted it. After that, and not more than 20 minutes ago, I posted an article that's shocking. Kill Trump Chorus Takes Sinister New Twist. I think it was published on, uh, I don't know where it came from. But a board member of the anti-American, anti-family, anti-Christian, anti-straight ACLU in Colorado, said on his Facebook page to kill all Donald Trump supporters. Not one comment from Facebook about taking down this call for death and murder. And I got 9,057 people reached on that one. And leads me right back to where I was going to go and where I will go. Listen to what I said. I intended to talk about something inspirational. 4,443 people responded. I showed an article where the ACLU threatens to kill and tells people to kill Trump supporters. And Zuckerberg has not taken down that post. 9,000 people reached. That kind of tells you everything. And it puts what I'm about to say in a new context. And here's what I wrote before the show. I just read it straight out. My voice and my ability to move crowds is my gift, but also my burden. This power of the magical voice, which I first discovered in the first grade in a slum school in the Bronx, can change people's fates. It's a great gift and a great burden. How would you use this power if you were me as a broadcaster and best-selling author from this day forward? I intend to make this day forward the first day of the rest of my life, as was said in the hippie 70s and 60s. We can change our lives. You say, well, what's wrong with your life, Michael? Well, it's not that there's anything wrong with my life, but it's not what I want it to be. I don't feel that I'm inspiring people in the way I want to inspire them. You see, you can inspire through hate, as ISIS does, as the ACLU does, even as Hillary and Obama do in their own quasi-moderate ways. They inspire through hate. You can inspire through anger. You can inspire through rage. You can inspire through false righteous indignation. We, we know that operates. We get it every day of the week, mainly on talk radio. In varieties, that's what you get. Anger, rage, false righteous indignation. And it riles you up and you listen. That's an inspiration. But then there's the bigger inspirations. You can inspire through love, hope, humor, the positives. I know it sounds hippy-dippy, 60s, but I look I look at the history of the world, and I look at the world today, and I realize that if we don't positive, excuse me, if we don't inspire each other through positive attributes, love, hope, and humor, we're going to descend into the barbarism of the left and the barbarism of ISIS. Now, maybe this is a different turn for Michael Savage. I get it. You like me to be hard. You like me to be tough. You like me to give you the breaking news. You like me to be cynical. You like me to be analytical. You like me to give you stuff that you don't hear anyone else. I get that. But there's a limit to that. There's a limit to, the, to that. Believe it or not, that's all limited. There's a lot of area beyond all of that. That's called space, time, and the universe, and I want to go there. I want to go there in this life with you, and I want to inspire you in the most positive manner. So I'm asking you a simple question. If you were me, if you had the power that I have for as long as I still may have it, and God only knows how long I'll have this power as a broadcaster, as a best-selling author, how would you inspire people on this program? 
What would you do if you had the microphone to inspire people? And I'm going to give you the phone number, 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. I think about this season that we're in, the season of peace and the season of love. I think of Christmas. Christianity is the religion of peace. Christianity is the true religion of peace. Islam is not a religion of peace. Christianity is the religion of peace. Christianity is the religion of peace. The religion of peace. Turn the other cheek. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These are messages that come from Christianity. Now, many Jewish people do listen to this show, a very small number, but they're mainly the Orthodox Jewish people. The liberals don't listen to me because they have no religion. They have no faith. They have just cynicism and anger and a derision towards everyone except themselves. I get that. And I don't mean to denigrate Judaism in any way. It's a great religion. It's the primary monotheistic religion, or I should say the progenitor of all monotheistic religions is what I meant to say. The progenitor, not the primary. Judaism is the progenitor of all monotheistic religions. Every educated person knows that. But I want to remind all of my Jewish listeners that were it not for Christians, there would be no Judaism left on the planet. Hitler would have won. Every Jew would have been killed. There'd be no Judaism. It would have died off the planet. And that's why I say to the Jewish listeners who are not as evolved as I'd like them to be, you have to get out of the ghetto of your own mind. You have to come out of the ghetto of your own thinking and understand who your Christian brothers and sisters are. And to my Christian listeners, since I'm talking about inspiration today, what can you do? What can you do in an age of deceit and lies and terror? What you can do is reaffirm your own religion. Instead of letting your church become a mosque or a, a, a Unitarian uh, a meeting place or a drunk tank on uh, Tuesday nights, you can go to church again. However hokey that sounds, however cynical you are, however hard you are, however unneeding you think you really are, you know in your heart that there's something missing in you. You know that you crave something greater. Because the human being is not a dog. The human being is not a bear. The human being is not a fly. The human being is not an eagle. We are unique creatures. And we need something different than the bear, the dog, the snake, and the eagle. What is that thing that we need? It's that thing called God. These creatures, they don't know God. They are of God, they were created by God, but they don't really need God. That's why they're lower animals. We, as higher animals, need higher things than just fo food and fornication. Unfortunately, our society, primarily because of the degenerates in the media, have fallen lower than the snake. The media has promulgated the idea and promoted the idea that we only need f a food and fornication. And so when people are empty, that's what they seek, food and fornication. And when they're really empty, what happens? They become drug addicts. They start with marijuana, they end up with heroin, crack, you name it. What is it about drugs? What is it that human beings are seeking in drugs? Why do they go for drugs? As God has been driven out of America, drugs have entered America. I know this has been said before. I get it. But what does an empty soul look to do? An empty soul looks to fill itself. Just as an empty vessel needs to be filled with a liquid to be complete. An empty human being needs to fill itself to be complete. And how does it fill itself? I know, again, many of you will laugh because you're cynical. <laughs> it's through those things I'm talking about, inspiration. The musician finds the inspiration God knows where and then has the inspiration to pick up the, the, the instrument. Do you think a musician can play one day without inspiration from somewhere? Unfortunately, so many musicians don't have that human inspiration that they seek, and they get it th through drugs. I get that. I understand. It's true for many artists who don't understand that the greatest artists were not drug addicts. The greatest dr artists in the history of the world were not drug addicts. They were usually God addicts. Did you know that? Look at the greatest art. In history, you'll find most of them were super-religious people who literally saw God in their living room. 
And they took the power of God, and it was transmitted through the paintbrush or through that piece of marble. How could a man like Rodin take a piece of inert stone and inside that stone see the essence of a human form and sculpt from that block of inert stone of marble the portrait of a human being that looks so real that a uh, hundred years later I go and look at them in the museum and literally inside that carved eye I can see the person. How is that possible? How? So today is a, is a unique day for me. I could talk about Trump. I can talk about the ACLU calling for the killing of Trump supporters and Zuckerberg, who took down my posts, not taking down the ACLU's posts. It tells you everything you need to know about uh, certain organizations in the media, how they're one and the same with the government. I've told you this for years, though. This is nothing new. They wouldn't have gotten this far if they weren't an arm of the government. Do you actually think that Google or Facebook or Microsoft could have gotten this far if they were not working hand in glove with the United States government all these years? Do you actually believe that? And in, in, in a sense, what I'm saying to you is the media is the government, the government media complex. And so I stand again. I'll go back to what I said to you before. My voice and my ability to move crowds is my gift, but it's also my burden. This is a power, the magical voice. It's a power I first discovered when I found out I could speak to the assembly in the first graded PS48 in a slum school in the Bronx. I found out that I enjoyed speaking to that crowd of kids. I wasn't afraid of them. I loved seeing their faces smile when I told a joke or made a, f a fool of myself. It didn't matter. I was a little clown. And they laughed. I liked that. Well, when I spoke with such a clear voice and wasn't afraid, the little pipsqueak that I was, and the crowd listened to me, I enjoyed that power. And I discovered something. I discovered I can move audiences, and that means I can change people's fates. As I learn later in life, it's not about just being a clown. It's not about entertaining people and making them laugh. It's about changing people's fates. It's a great gift and a great burden. And so I turn the show over to you. It's a different show than I've ever done in my 21 years because each day to me, I must tell you, I see as my last day in radio, my last day on earth. Would you believe that? I know you don't believe that. I know it's a, it's a form of reverse worship. But it's the only way to approach what I do and have any meaning. If I look at every show as though it's my last show, I look at my my every book as my last book, that's a pretty big stress, by the way. But it also permits me to be fresh and new. And so I'm going to make it fresh and new with you and ask you how would you inspire people if you had my power as a broadcaster on all of these phenomenal radio stations and around the world on the Internet. What would you do with this power to inspire people? Yeah, I said again, and I'll repeat it again. Some inspire through hate. Do I have to say who? Do I have to mention who inspires through hate and division? Do I have to say the names or the organizations that use hate and division as their stock and trade? Or through anger, rage, false righteous indignation? I've used all of them. In my 21 years, I've used every one of those emotions to move my audiences. Because every one of those emotions raged through me or played through me or danced through me. And today I want to go in another direction. You can inspire in other ways. You can inspire through love, hope, and humor. Now you say, Mike, you know, that's all well and good, but we're facing a Muslim enemy. And I know the rest of the story. I can give you the whole, the whole paragraph, the chapter, and the verse. I've written about it. I've talked about it. Almost everything that Donald Trump says I agree with because it's all in my last two books. I'm not accusing him of plagiarism. Don't get me wrong. Trust me. If this is what you do in your spare time is write books instead of giving speeches, and then you hear the words that you say being spoken by others, what can you say? You say, thank God for the printed and spoken word. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O. You got to be soft. Did you know that? Because if you're too hard, you'll break. Did you know that as well? You know, many people can't listen to talk radio anymore because although they know that we are truth sayers,